All right, guys, we got a very special unboxing for you today. Comes with all the cautions, all the warnings, do not drop. Give you another hint. Designed, engineered, assembled in the USA. What could it possibly be? Here's the last hint. Lock and bar. For those who don't know um, what lock and bar is, they produce high efficiency water heaters, boilers, and pool heaters. Um, so I've got the plastic already, or the cardboard cone at the bottom. Now we're just left to open it up. And there it is. Our cute little boiler. So again, it's the lock and bar. We got the lock and bar night. 95% uh, efficiency. Here's gonna be the intake, I believe, the exhaust. Um, nothing too crazy on it. Just a cute little boiler that's gonna sit on the ground um, in our mechanical room. But for the, since we're doing the radiant floor heating and everything, we needed uh, um, 199,000. Oh, you got a glare. I don't know if you can see that. 199,000 um, BTU per hour on this bad boy. And of course, it's equipped unit for a uh, high altitude um, since we are where we are. So I'm gonna get the rest of this thing taken off the pallet and I'm gonna pull it into the mechanical room and uh, take a look at it some more. Let's check out what else we got in this box here. Ooh, all sorts of goodies. Outdoor sensor. I'm guessing these are just some bug screens for the uh, intake or the exhaust. Some anchors. Looks like the uh, connecting flanges for the inlet and the outlet. What? There's another box inside this box. Sorry, I'm uh, throwing you guys around everywhere. I am definitely not used to opening boxes uh, one-handed. And what the hell could possibly be in here? Oh, circulation pump. Oh, look at that little thing. There you go. Perfect. You need one of those to keep all the... Uh, the water circling through uh, through everything, so that is perfect. Awesome. Awesome. We've got one more thing in here. Ah, uh, looks like some sort of piece of steel for something or another. I'm not quite sure where that goes. We'll have to uh, learn more about that. And uh, there you go. That is the bottom of the box. So, like I said, we'll get this uh, off the pallet into mechanical room, and uh, we'll go from there. I've worked on these before. They're uh, pretty straightforward. They're pretty good boilers. Um, and since Lock and Var is uh, designed, like I said, designed and made here in the U.S., their tech support is here in the U.S. I believe they're based out of uh, uh, Tennessee. Um, don't remember the city. I think Lebanon, Tennessee, or something like that. Um, so yeah, once you call for help or questions, you won't get somebody in a foreign country. You'll get somebody here in the U.S. Um, which is always a huge plus. But today, we're gonna get some of this mess under control. That's the plan anyway. So, this is all my uh, radiant lines for the house. Down there's the ones for the basement. These ones to the left are coming out of the garage. And all of these are for the main floor. And if you follow us on our Instagram page, on uh, One Project Away, I posted all of our uh, materials or a picture of it the other day. Um, so here's everything that we need. A few circulation pumps, a few, uh, I think I got four manifolds. Here's the control for the pumps, um, all the shutoff valves, everything that we need, some of the zone controlling, um, air separator, 
all this fun stuff here. So we're going to get to do some uh, sweating, some copper sweating. Got a few sticks over there. So I haven't talked too much about this. Um, <clears throat> but here is our uh, lock and bar boiler. This is the lock and bar uh, night 199. And to go with that, we're, we are using this indirect hot water heater that is made by uh, HTP. So what's going to happen is basically coming right out of the boiler, going to plug in to the uh, um, hot water tank. And it's basically just a stainless steel heat exchanger in there. Um, so that will keep it, keep it warm. And this thing should be able to produce... If I'm not mistaken, over 300 gallons of hot water in the first hour. So we'll be able to run basically any hot water in the house that we want to and shower and whatnot. And you still won't, won't feel, uh, feel the temperature drop in the water. So we got most of this stuff finished up, um, the hard piping things. Um, got a few circulation pumps, got the water, hot water heater or hot water tank hooked up. Um, got the expansion tank, we got the aerator, and this here is going to be the supply coming out. So our next step is to get the manifolds in place um, to put them on the wall where they go. They'll be here and up top so we know where to run the supply to can't run the supply until we know where it needs to go. So next thing is uh, manifolds. All right, so now I'm working on getting these uh, manifolds in place. I mean, as you can see, red is gonna be supply. The blue is return. And uh, when I laid these out, um, I basically put the two loops right next to each other, the supply and the return. So these are my next two lines here that I need. So what you do, you pull the uh, cap off. Next, you need to measure out where you cut the pecs at. And cut it. So next, we need the nut and the, the seals for this. They come in these little packs. And uh, so we got the big, uh, the main nut to tighten it up. We have the seal so the pack slides onto here and then this actually seals up and last but not least we have uh, i guess you'd call it the ferro nut here so first you slide on the nut that tightens everything next you put on the ferro nut and i found it helps to push against something solid to get it in there and last but not least the seal Okay, now we just line it up and uh, slide the nut up and get it tightened into place. Next we have the return, pull the cap. And there you go, just like that, one loop is finished. So uh, I got three more to go to, on this one, and then I'm gonna move up and do the other ones. Oh, 
Okay, so I just finished up my first uh, upper manifold and uh, I was worried yesterday just trying to think on what the best way to mount it and to do this um, to get it put up here. So I was thinking if I was going to mount it right set up that I would run the pipes down and then around and back up. But after reading the um, the manual, the instruction manual, installation manual, um, you can mount this vertical, horizontal. You can mount it um, any which way you want, basically. Um, the only thing is if you mount this thing, you know, with these going up and down, then this aerator here is no longer functioning because the float in here won't be able to work. Um, so, yeah, you can mount it upside down as long as you got the uh, the aerator where it needs to be to bleed the air out up top. So, um, yeah, it's kind of uh, looks pretty nice, looks neat. So uh, I'm going to keep going and get working. I think I got two more to do in this whole mess, so I'm going to get after it here. Scratching my brain a little bit here. Um, I'm doing a traditional uh, pressure tank system for my well and for the water. Um, so I brought that in here just so I can see um, how much room it takes up, what it looks like in here. Um, and I'm working right now on getting my manifold set. So you can see I got the basement one done and the garage one done. Um, this is for the suspended floor upstairs. So what I got going on is I have another one to go up in here. And I have one more that's actually missing. Uh, the plumbing supply house forgot to order it and I don't have it. So I got to fit that one and two more manifolds on there on that wall somewhere and while i am doing that i'm keeping in mind um supply return i'm keeping in mind trying to visualize because this is the supply coming in here so this manifold and this manifold run at a different temperature than these three because they are in concrete so they don't require as much so gonna have to go to these two first and then put a mixing valve in here somewhere to get these other three manifolds tied together so you know kind of a pickle here trying to figure out what the best route or the best way to plumb this and the best way to get uh three manifolds up in this area so uh yeah this is gonna be fun this is getting very exciting we are so close to being done but there's still quite a bit of work left to do so instead of making this a super long video I decided to break this up into two parts so I think this is gonna be the end of part one but I'll show you real quick where we're at 
So everything is hooked up, everything is connected. You can see I got my boiler um, intake and the flue all plumbed in. So now we're just waiting for my water sample to get tested so they, I can find out what kind of water softener I need and what kind of iron filter I need because I don't want to trash my boiler with uh, dirty water. So that is what we are waiting for. And uh, in part two, we're gonna get the water softener and the iron filter in and then charge the whole system and try to balance it. And then I'm gonna go through um, and explain what all the different things are and their functions. So if that is something you're interested in, please stick around and I'll have part two out as uh, soon as we can. Thanks for watching, take care. Hey boys and girls, um, we just broke into Yuri's and Oksana's house. Um, security definitely not up to par which is fine you know it's new construction not much people can take anyway um, definitely progress going um, not quite sure you know what their next steps are I see he's putting the deck in I see a to-do list uh, plumbing electrical stuff like that duct work um, but it, so far so good. Looking good, Yuri. Looking good, Oksana. Definitely, uh, you know, just let me know when you see this video. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe.